Hey everybody, it's Brian from Carving is Fun. In this video, we're gonna do a fun little Eevee tutorial. If you don't know who Eevee is, it's a little Pokemon. It's a little evolution Pokemon that can turn into like Flareon, Vaporeon, Espeon, Umbreon, you know, all the all the cool popular evolution Pokemons. This is gonna be more of an intermediate project. All you're gonna to need to do this is your preferred whittling knife. In this case, I'm using detail knife from Shaft Tools and their three piece set. And then you're gonna need a pencil and a one by one by four inch piece of wood. And in this case, we're gonna be cutting off a little piece of the wood just to make it easier. You can slice it off yourself or if you have like any sort of handsaw or whatever, there's this really neat one I found on online a little while ago, which is a folding saw, which I think you got it for like 10 to 15 bucks really useful compact i like it and i'll also have like a little sketch outline of what to do you can kind of see where everything lies so you have the tail the head right there and like underneath so i think it's pretty pretty easy to do relatively simple let's get on with it here i already have one drawn up but if you wanted to do it yourself you don't need to print this out and copy it literally like all i've done with all mine is just freehanding it so i just know it's like okay it's a little bit Lower there and it slants back right here. Just freehand everything. That's how I made my original. You don't need to make it perfect. I think this is about 15 millimeters or a, about a half an inch that we're gonna just be lopping off. Moving about that much. Little nook, this is where you're gonna get a little loop of the tail and then connect the body. Then of course we wanna have the ears on there. I'm starting about halfway down the back and then going up towards the head. That's just a general outline and it doesn't have to be perfect or exact. And to start off, I am going to take off different pieces of wood. You can use your saw to cut off like the front pieces here and the tail piece. I'm just gonna use the knife on the, the front piece, but on the tail, since it's a lot, I'm just gonna remove it. Parts that I'm going to be removing are gonna be this section, this section, this section here and here, and also a little bit up there. At this point, I'm going to focus on making this like a little chewy cutout. Uh, get your nice sharp knife. And I like to work on corners. So uh, instead of cutting straight like this, I'll cut off this corner first because it's less wood to work with and I find it to be easier. And then if you want, you can transfer this image to the other side. But what I like to do is just make a quick little line on the other side here and here. Now I have two little notches I made. All I need to do is just carve along that little imaginary line or you can draw a regular line. So I did corner, corner, and then now I'll focus on this corner. And you can cut it down to this line all the way if you want, but I like to leave a little bit of extra. Leave extra wood, gives you more to work with. That way you don't accidentally cut off too much. Now I'm gonna work on the under of the tail, cut in at a slight angle, and making a stop cut right there. That's literally all I'm doing is I'm making the stop cut and then sliding back to that stop cut. And then now I can finish off the rest of this. And now I'm gonna follow this line all the way to the other side and do this one about the same. Then from here, we're gonna to wanna to do about the same thing with the stop cut, the initial one, then repeat until you get to the right depth that you want. All right, cool. And since I'm still working on the bottom side, I'm gonna take this little curved part out. And since the wood grain is going this direction, we don't wanna just carve in and then carve out because we're gonna run the risk of hitting the wood grain right here and ripping off this entire bottom side. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is come in at an angle from one direction and then an angle from the other direction and then meet the blade in, in the middle essentially. This makes it so you have a nice curve there. And then again, transfer the same lines to the other side. And then you can start working your way across and joining the chew and making a slight curve down the middle. Just take slow, shallow cuts. Don't push it. Take your time with it. Doesn't matter if it takes you six hours or six days. Uh, cut safe, <laughs> it'll be better. All right, now that we got the curve on the bottom, we're gonna start defining the rest of the tail. So cut in, create another stop cut, and then just come back in at an angle. Again, I'm working at the corners only, not going across. And then follow that line. In this case, I'm doing three lines because there's three points I need to be aware of. The start point going in on both sides and then the middle of the V, which is right there. So middle of the V and come back to it. And then just like how we did the bottom, work your way down into there from the side. Take it slow uh, if you need to. And when I'm pulling it towards me here, I'm not like yanking it towards me. You can see I'm literally using this thumb right here and using that 
to pull the blade. I'm just using this hand to support the, the blade on this and I'm not applying pressure. So I know a lot of people say don't cut towards yourself. I say this is true, but don't cut you towards yourself without control. Like if I'm just wailing out like this, I'm gonna hurt myself. Doesn't matter if I have a slice resistant glove or not. All right, so on the corner here, it's gonna make a quick little cut across because I want to get rid of uh, the wood because I want the tail to be a little bit curled and pointed upwards. So and then here, Kind of like how we did at the bottom with the curve. Uh, just take it slow and easy, nice small cuts, or you might accidentally cut off too much. So now I have my basic outline of the Eevee. You're starting to get your general shapes going for the outline. And then we're gonna further define it and then create something from that. So in this case, what I like to do is I like to work from the tail to the front. Why? Because it's a little bit easier and the end has all the extra details to it. So in this case, how I have this set up, I kind of want my tail to be whipping off to the side. So I'm going to be removing all this right here and then tapering it in a little bit on all the edges. There's no real science to it, just start cutting. This is the back of the body where the legs are and then this is where the tail is. We're just going to bring it in a little bit here. Don't bring it in too much or you're going to have a very, very thin tail and that makes it a little bit more brittle. And I'm not going to be finishing the tail in one go. I'm going to leave it rough because at the end I do all the finishing. Now I'm going to start whipping it so that the tail looks like it's pointing probably to about right here. So I'm going to take off a little bit here and then I'm going to take off a little bit more there. So now we're going to start working up onto the body. And keep in mind the ears do go further back past like the mane and whatnot. So what I like to do is just leave a little, make my first stop cut right there, like where the ear is going to end and then just make a little cut going right up to it. That gives me an indicator where the back is going to be. So I'll make a line going across so I can mirror it on the other side. There you go. So now I know the ears are going to end there and I can start working on the body. In this case, for the time being, I like to try to bring the body down to about right there. That way the ears up higher than the back, like how I have going on here. And we're just going to basically be doing the same kind of thing that we did at the beginning there. Make some stop cuts and just work away down. Now that I got that, I'm going to start working on going underneath the ear and down the body. You take your tip and bring it in right here where the, where the ear and the body and the back meet. Take it in and then push it along the lines of the back, like towards the end of the ear. You're kind of just like making a kind of a stop cut in there. And you can do the same thing going along here. Take the tip and push it down. Sometimes the wood's a little bit harder, so start shallow. And then after you get that initial line going, you can just start going all right, so what this is going to do for us now is create a stop cut kind of effect right there. So if I were to just slice into it, it literally comes off and falls and it stops uh, removing wood up to that point. Since we have the stop cut line right there and right here, all I'm doing is taking the knife and you can see the tip of the knife is falling that contour. And once I reach that edge, it literally allows the wood just to fall right off. You can see that this is just a little bit lower, which is fine. Now I'm going to start defining some of the underside side of the body. And again, make sure we're doing it in curves. Then we're going to attempt to do the same thing at the top. This is where it's going to get a little bit tricky. First, I like to start off with a stop cut right there. Then I'll start working underneath. So round off the body on the back, make stop cuts. You can see I kind of rounded it and then it's square right there. At this point, what you can do is create a stop cut going like this. Don't push in too terribly hard because then you might accidentally rip the wood grain. Just do small little bits at a time and then you can cut up into it. If you do it right, it should come right out. So you're cutting at multiple angles. You're cutting this direction, this direction, and this direction. And in the end, you'll have a chunk of wood that just comes out. And then you can just start rounding off the rest of the, the back end so it's a little bit more organic looking. All right, and then since I did that on this side right here, I'm gonna do it on the other side. So basically we're mirroring everything we just did. Then the back end is pretty much roughed out. So from here, we're gonna want to start drawing on a couple references, like how we have right here, the back of the head and the arms. We're kind of gonna kind of draw a line straight down from right about here. And that's where I kind of want the back of the cheekbone to be. But also I want the, the bottom of the legs, which are right here. And then create a small kind of triangle. That's gonna create this little gap right there between the chin and the legs. So it kind of defines the head. 
I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do here. This is gonna be very similar to what we did to the other side. How we made the stop cut, we're gonna stick the, the tip of the blade in and then draw it along the way of the uh, wood grain. It's gonna be the easiest one. And then for here, we're not gonna be doing drawing the line and making a stop cut. Instead, we're gonna do what's kind of like a, like a chip carving kind of cut. So we're gonna start with the blade here. I'm gonna push it in until the blade reaches about that tip of the triangle. And then we're gonna come in from the other angle. If you do it just right, that chip should come right out. And we're gonna try and do this on the other side here. Since I don't have it drawn out, we're gonna guesstimate. I'm assuming it's right about there. Line straight down, line going across, and little triangle. As you can see, I'm not being like super precise or exact. I don't feel like you need to be. It does not have to be perfect. I don't think mine are perfectly aligned, but oh well. <laughs> That's the way it is. Now that we have that outlined, we're gonna start doing the ears. Now this is gonna be a little bit more complex. You can, if you want, create more jagged lines, like straight lines, but what I'm gonna do is take my blade and create kind of a curved part right there. And then from here, what we're gonna do is stick our blade in, and kind of similar to what we did here, we're gonna stick our blade to the tip of where that cut is, and then we're gonna start slicing away the wood. If you do it right, again, it should just pop right off. Now that we got that, we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. And since this is from a different angle that I am slightly uncomfortable with, I'm gonna do a lighter cut first, and then start getting deeper. And do about the same thing that you did to the other side. And again, and you got your ears. So as you know, the, these are the bottom legs. The legs aren't gonna stick out all the way that far. I'm probably gonna cut them off right about there, like in the middle of the head. And then here, what we're gonna do is take the line right here and then go up. So we're gonna separate the leg from the body and then we're gonna remove some excess right there. We'll start with the excess. Be very careful with doing this part because you can accidentally hurt yourself or take off more wood than you anticipated. And then separated out the, the feet there. And then with this part right here, do like I did with the other parts. I'm just gonna drag my tip of my blade with it. And again, what this is doing is it's separating out the legs from the rest of it. Simple matter, just shaving it off. So now that's recessed. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Again, does not have to be exactly perfect. There we go. Recessed a little bit in there. And we're gonna move on. We'll start making the face more narrow. We're not gonna go too crazy on the face. It's still pretty wide, but we're just gonna be tapering the face inwards a little bit. If you want, draw two lines, kind of like in thirds in the front, and just bring the, the nose to each of the lines first and then start rounding it out. The face will be more defined once we get the ears all set. We're leaving room for the ears. And speaking of which, we're gonna start taking a little bit of this back and going down, so I'm going to lop off the, the corner of the ear there, the corner of the ear there, and then start like finding the top of the forehead. Now that we got that, we know the ears, tips of the ears are going to be like right back here. So what I'm going to do is create kind of like a triangular shape to begin with. I can see where the ears are connecting right there, so kind of another triangular shape going up to that. And then same thing, triangle shape, and then bring tip of the triangle towards the front. So first, just start trimming the ears up. And then we're gonna take off this little corner here. So now that we have this, one of the things that I prefer to do when working with the ears is starting back here and then working my way up to the front. Like how we did with the other ones, we're gonna take the tip, the blade, and then make like an indentation you want you can do it to the top as well all right so easiest thing to do take the blade and then just use that stop cut that you did and then just remove a chunk of the wood do the same thing to the other side and then we're going to do about the same thing on the front so we're going to leave this area is slightly unfinished for the time being, but right now I want to start making a definition between the, the head here for the mane and like the back of the head. You can see there's a separation there. Uh, if the video will pick it up, it's slanted downwards in both directions to a single singular point. But this point, we want to make sure that we match it where like the natural point of the head is going to be. 
So we're kind of guessing at this point, but we can see this little triangle that we made. It's going to go straight up and basically point at where we want that to be. So if we follow this going up, and then it's basically right there. So for this, literally we're going to stick the blade in and then draw another line. It's going to be a little bit more difficult since we're going across the wood grain. So shallow cuts first and then work your way down. From here, just like how we did all the other ones, we're going to create like a little V cut out and use that little stop cut. Alright, so since we're still up on top of the head and the ears, we're going to start shaving this down. So we're going to kind of angle this a little bit to, so that the, it's uh, angled off the side. And you can see right now it's kind of blocky. So we're kind of going to take off like that much then above the blade. I think that's about right. Alright, at this point I'm just going to make a line going across. This is where I hope that the center of my blade is going to meet uh, going in from two angles. So on this side I start shallower, I go deepest here and they come back up. So what that looks like as I go in, I go in deeper here and then I come, start coming, coming back up. Be very slow and detailed with it. And then you take it and you clean it up a little bit. I'm just going to expand the ear canal a little bit more. There, a uh, nice little ear canal. Do the same thing to the other side. There we go. Now we're going to start working on separating out the body from the mane. So we're going to separate like right here. You see how the mane's coming up, but it doesn't really have a de definition at the top. We're going to make that look a little bit better. I kind of want it to be right there. So just like how we're doing before, take your blade, create a stop cut. From here, it's going to feel a little bit weird, but we're going to take this and then kind of slide it across up to that line. Everything should come off relatively easy. And if you get it right, you can start getting underneath the ear a little bit too. And then I'm going to kind of just define the rest of the body so it's a little bit thinner. So you can see I'm getting up underneath the ears. So now there's a gap underneath the ears. Follow suit on the other side. Remove that. Now that we have that, we have the definition of the bottom of the cheek, top of the head. Now we need to do the actual side of the head here. We're going to be doing more stop cuts. So we have the little triangle thing and then kind of line backwards. So line backwards from where the ear attaches and then make the same kind of cut where you drag your tip of your blade to the wood. You create your stop cut and then you're going to be creating like a little V cut there to define the, the back of the chin and the mane. All right, cool. So you got definition of the head. We're going to do the same thing to the other side and see if I can make it similar. If not, oh well. So I got most of that defined. And then from here, we're going to start working on the mane. All we're going to do is kind of make it so that you can almost say it looks like it has like flames, but it's more like chunks and patches of fur. You can make it as simple or detailed as you want. For me, I just find it easy to just like create little triangle cuts into the wood. You can see it's like creates like what looks like a fur pattern. You can go in as far as you want or you can just create like a little chunky. This is this is up to your discretion. So this one I'm just going to create a single one in the middle. You can also just have one singular one in the middle. Really it's purely your discretion. So now I got those in there. I'm going to create some extra little cuts. Make it look more rounded and organic. From there you pretty much got the outline of the EV. And we're just going to take the knife and touch up a lot of stuff. There's lots of little extra burrs everywhere. Just make it nice and smooth. There's also the other option where you can take sandpaper to it. Otherwise you can do small controlled cuts and you can start smoothing out a lot of your cuts, adding some extra details. And just start smoothing stuff out. Like at this point, it might be beneficial for me just to sand it. So I'm gonna sand it and see how this turns out. So yeah, most of it you can get with uh, like a regular sander and then just hand sand some of the tighter quarters and whatnot. Really doesn't take much. All I'm using is 150 grit sandpaper and it takes care of most of it. And there you go. Pretty simple little Eevee. I think this one took me about, my time around here looks like it says an hour and 12 minutes. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward and easy project. I believe if you have some prior experience and skills already, 
for whittling, you're more likely going to be able to do this uh, right off the go. If you're brand new to whittling, start off with one of the foxes first. It'll create the the baseline for what you need to know. If you want uh, painting instructions, my paid members are going to have access to that. It's a very long, kind of boring video, which is not great for YouTube. Um, I also will have the full version that is mostly unedited uh, available as well if you just want to watch it all the way through. But yeah, fun, easy little project. If you're going to paint, the video that I, I made with painting is going to be using this watercolor paint set. I'll have a link for it uh, down below. I'll have a link for everything that I use here down below. But the colors I use on this one, so the body is burnt umber. All the white accents are the Chinese white and then the eyes and ears are deep black. So I started off with the Chinese white and then I went from lightest to darkest essentially. And then I added a couple little drops of the, the white paint on the eyes just for make it give it a little bit of extra depth so it's not looking like you're staring into a soulless void of an Eevee. <laughs> but yeah, fun project. Give it a go. If you make your own, show me pictures of it on Instagram. The link is on the YouTube channel. Just tag me in it. I'd love to see how yours turned out. All right, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you have yourselves a good one.